Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockman Supply. Um, this here is a lamp that my great grandfather made when he was well into his 80s. So all my memories of my great grandpa essentially had to do with him woodworking. So my grandma dropped it off last week and said it wasn't working, but there were some electrical issues in here that I got fixed. But I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for me to do something that I've always wanted to do. I'm gonna make a wooden lampshade with a bandsaw. So let me put this aside here for a second. The way to make a wooden lampshade with a bandsaw is essentially we're gonna cut a veneer in a circle. So there's a couple things that we have to do right to make this work. Um, first thing, you have to make sure that the wood is very well supported. So this round ripper I'm holding from the top and the bottom, there's not gonna be any rocking at all. It's totally locked in there. Um, if you're just using a circle cutter with a pin on the bottom, if that wood rocks, you're going to ruin your veneer and you're just going to cut through the side. Now the other thing is setup. Um, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, I have a video on how to set up a bandsaw to cut a perfect circle. I'll post a link at the top here. But that is very important because if we're not cutting a perfect circle, if we're cutting a spiral, um, we're not going to, it's not going to work out. So make sure you have the wood locked in and make sure you have it set up really well to cut that circle. So, and I've done the, both those things now. So the next thing that I gotta do, essentially, is cut it. So I'm gonna slide my table. Let me get rid of these here. I'm basically just gonna slide this bandsaw table in. I've already made a test cut just to make sure. And then we'll be good to go here. So now what I've done, you don't have to do it this way, but essentially I've got a log put in the round ripper this direction. You could have a half a log this direction or just a square block of wood um, and have end grain, face grain, end grain, face grain. Um, that would leave your lampshade with a really interesting look. Um, I did it this way just because this is my first time doing it and I feel like this will be a little bit easier um, for when I'm putting the lampshade together. So I'm gonna make the cut and then I'll show you how I'm gonna assemble it on my lamp. So, yes, yeah, sorry, slide it in here. And the other important thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to start right where you left off before. So you might be able to see with that camera, right there, I have a little ridge. That's where my bandsaw blade has come out. So that's where I'm going to start my cut. So I want to cut it thin enough that my piece of veneer is translucent. So you'll be able to see a, a, a light from behind it. Um, so it might take me a couple tries, but I think that right here is good. I hope I don't have it. Let me go a little bit thinner. Problem is, this is kind of just all eyeball here. There's no good way to measure it when it's round like this that I can come up with. If you guys have an idea, let me know. Okay, let's make a cut here. So right where I started, make sure you start there again. Okay, there's my stop. Lock it up. And I'm going to very slowly turn this knob. You don't need to rush this at all. I want, I'm not going to be able to sand it, so I'm going to go nice and slow to get a smooth cut. Now, right here. I'm getting into a trap, but that's just going to be part of the look of the lampshade. Okay. So if we look at the ring I made, 
approximately a sixteenth of an inch thick. I may cut another one just to see if I can get it a little bit thinner because I want it nice and see through. So we will end up gluing this together like that. Um, and that crack, I have a couple little support rings I'm going to put in there. We'll just join together like that. So now, the only issue with this piece of wood, it was an incredibly large diameter. So I'm limited how big this lampshade can actually be. If I had a bigger diameter log, I could make this a lot bigger. The other limitation here is the height. Right now it's about seven and a half inches. If I wanted to, I could put spacers underneath these feet to raise it up. And, that, and I could go up to 12 inches if I wanted to. Um, I didn't do that, so I'm just going to work with the, what I have here right now. Alright, so I went ahead and cut actually three more uh, lampshades, um, just to get a feel for the thickness and what would be translucent and all that. So, um, now you only see three total here, so I cut four total, but one of them I cut a little bit too thin, and as soon as I picked it up it kind of disintegrated. So, I ended up going with this right here. Um, this is about as thin as I could go. Because this wood has wormholes is, and is a touch punky on this side, I couldn't go any thinner than this, so that's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Now you'll notice I got some hardware in there. Um, this is some stuff I just made up. Um, on my laser cutter, I kind of cheated, I laser cut these. I made all these rings. Now you guys at home, you can make this on a scroll saw or um, however you wanted to do it. A scroll saw would work well or even a lathe. Um, so I cut these rings and I'm using these as kind of supports. So you see where I got the big crack in the wood. I just slid the ring in there and that would be my support. So then I CA glued it and then with the hardener there. Now, the other thing that you'll notice, this right here is the joint in my wood. So again, I use CA glue. And the nice thing is I could hold it with one hand after I've glued it, get it lined up and hold it, and then use the accelerator and it would dry in about 10 seconds. Um, so you can do this by yourself without having to worry about clamps um, and just spray it on there like that. Now, on the bottom, same deal, I put a ring, but then spanning the ring, I have one of these little X's here. This is again something I laser cut, but you could whip that out on a scroll saw. Um, that just span the length there, and this is going to go underneath my light bulb. Now to adjust the length of this, I was kind of thinking as I was making this, if there's enough demand for it, I could start selling kits for you guys for all these rings. Um, if I get enough demand. So if you guys want that, just email me. But to adjust the length of this, you just snip it off like that. And then you can make a fit for whatever diameter lampshade you have. So, anywho, this will go right on top here. Just like that. And the lamp, the bulb, will go right on the inside here. Hard to see. So we'll screw that bulb in. So there's my lampshade. So if we look around, I got the crack there. Um, that's my joint. I got some wormholes here and here. Let me turn it on and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so it's hard to see because this room is so bright, but it's kind of cool with all them wormholes. Right here, you can see where the wood gets a little bit punky. It's very, very see-through here. And then you got the crack. Um, so now, obviously, that lampshade is way too small for that lamp. So I'm going to make another one at some point that actually suits that lamp. But for a first try, I'm pretty happy with that there. Now, the other thing I might do is just put a coat of mineral oil on there. It's unsanded, but if you get really close to it, I went really slow with my bandsaw. I had a nice, sharp blade. It did end up with a really smooth cut, so I might do a light sand on it um, and then put a mineral oil on it. And I feel like that might make it even more translucent. Um, so yeah, that's my lampshade there. If you guys want to give that a try, go for it. It's kind of a fun little project. If anyone has any questions about any of the tools that are used here, you can email me at info at stock and supply or comment on the video. And if you want to see future videos, subscribe. Thank you very much.